Hi, welcome to Game Battles Graphics 101. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the infamous winged logo, glossy tax effect, and neon line effect all rolled up into one. Uh, credit goes to Kobe17 from kobe17.deviantart.com for providing the brush resource. Uh, the font that I'm using is called Pinkoya Black, which you could download from uh, fontscroll.com or thefont.com and once you get those two installed go ahead and run Photoshop and open up a new document uh, since uh, game battles profiles pretty much run at 290 px at the width let's go ahead and set it at that once our document is open let's go ahead and set the background color to the same background that game battles uses for its profiles uh, the hex code for that is 2A3036. Uh, let's go ahead and fill our background with our foreground color. And let's go ahead and open our winged brush, which should have been installed already. Um, let's select the left wing logo to begin with. And let's go ahead and fit it into our document. As you can see, the preset is already big enough. So we're going to have to shrink it a little bit. And we're going to have to create a new layer for the wing logo by itself. So let's go ahead and do that. Once pasted into our document, let's go ahead and shrink it just a little bit more so that we could fit in the right wing. And instead of using the right wing, we'll go ahead and just uh, duplicate the layer. And we'll go ahead and go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. And let's go ahead and just uh, move it over to the right a little. And when we're satisfied with the, the outcome of that, let's go ahead and merge those two layers together. Um, let's go ahead and center the document itself. Alright, so let's go ahead and add some color to the wings. Um, I like using the gradient tool on this one, so let's go ahead and select the gradient tool. And let's go ahead and make some color matches by opening up the gradient tool. Um, it looks a little bland. Let's uh, go ahead and play with it a little bit. Um, I'm going to select something different, maybe a little bit darker color, so that it it shows that the colors are kind of meshing together. And let's go ahead and try that. All right, that looks fine to me. So uh, if you're satisfied, go ahead and play around, or uh, go ahead and use colors of your own. You don't necessarily have to use what I'm using. Uh, this is just an example. So uh, once we're satisfied with what we have, let's go ahead and create the drop shadow effect and the stroke effect to our wing logo. Um, let's start by uh, creating another layer underneath the gradient layer. Uh, let's go ahead and select the wing logo itself and expand it by two pixels. Um, let's go ahead and fill it with black. Let's go ahead and duplicate that afterwards and go to our filter menu and select Gaussian Blur. Uh, the settings I use for the Gaussian Blur depend on you really so uh, you're satisfied with the drop shadow. Let's go ahead and nudge it down a little bit and that's it. Once we're done with the wing logo let's go ahead and move on to the glossy text effect. Uh, let's go ahead and select the text tool and select Pinkoya Black as our font and let's go ahead and type out your name whatever you want in the middle and let's go ahead and center it once centered let's go ahead and nudge it down so that it fixes itself to the wing logo in the back okay now let's go ahead and select the outline of our font let's create another layer on top of that and move over to the gradient tool with the gradient tool selected, we're going to go ahead and select the foreground to transparent option. Um, let's set our foreground color to white so that we can overlay our font with the nice little white gradient, which we're going to opaque down to at least 60%. So some of that gray actually comes through. that looks about right okay so once we're happy let's go ahead and select the elliptical marquee from our toolbar 
And let's go ahead and draw an elliptical circle around our text. And let's go ahead and fill it with white. Uh, now let's go ahead and select the outline of our text and invert it by selecting shift control i and deleting the selection with that being deleted let's go ahead and set the layer option to soft light and let's drop the opacity down to something around 60 okay with that out of the way let's go ahead and apply the same drop shadow and stroke effect that we applied to our winged logo so uh, just follow the same steps as mentioned before and you should be done with the glossy text effect our last and final step is going to be the neon line effect uh, let's go ahead and select the brush uh, 5 pixel dimensions let's set the hardness to 0 and let's click the airbrush tool so that we get a nice smooth effect out of that brush with that out of the way let's go ahead and select the pen tool from our toolbar menu and let's start by clicking at the very left corner of the image and the second step is to click right by the edge of the text let's go ahead and give it a twist uh, space it out just uh, evenly click space it out and just repeat over until you get to the far right corner of the actual document and after that let's go ahead and fill the stroke and I'll show you how to do that you do this simply by uh, right clicking and selecting the stroke path and let's make sure that you simulate the pressure and that brush is selected and once you're uh, done with that let's go ahead and press enter and there you have it you can see it's nice and smooth just like we selected earlier um, let's go ahead and give our layer style an outer glow effect uh, let's click the color to something similar to our wing logo which is like a cyan color and there you have it you have the actual neon line but let's go ahead and make the other effect which is the appearance of it going over the text and overlaying back and forth um, I never used the actual eraser tool I like to use layer mask uh, if you're not familiar with layer mask, go ahead and use the eraser tool. But I'm going to show you guys how to use layer mask. Basically, it's just like the eraser tool, but if you mess up, you could always erase back in by switching between black and white. Common sense tells us that uh, the next part is easy. Just go ahead and delete the parts so that it gives an effect of an overlay over our text. And if you mess up, with uh, layer mask you could always erase back in like I mentioned once you're finished with that you're pretty much done with the actual image so that's it you know where to find the font you know where to download the brush and you now know how to do all three at once I hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you for watching